McBoyle was convicted for violating a federal statute, not a common law offense, a federal statute. He appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court. There was no question but that McBoyle had taken a stolen airplane across a state line. He won his appeal by persuading the Supreme Court that an airplane is not a motor vehicle. Let's have a look at this statute. In relevant part, it reads, When used in this act, the term motor vehicle shall include an automobile, automobile truck, automobile wagon, motorcycle, or any other self-propelled vehicle not designed for running on rails. The key concept is motor vehicle. The court overturns McBoyle's conviction on the ground that it violated the Due Process Clause of the Fifth Amendment. The statute did not give fair warning that an airplane thief might be convicted under the Act for taking a motor vehicle from one state to another. For the court, Justice Holmes wrote that the Due Process Clause requires fair warning. And to make the warning fair, the line between what is forbidden and what is not should be clear. Well, fair enough, but how is the line to be found? Does the court consult the dictionary? Or the popular picture the statutory term might conjure up? Justice Holmes concedes that the dictionary definition is wide enough to encompass an airplane. The court prefers the popular picture test of determining what is a motor vehicle. Had McBoyle transported the 1927 Lincoln Cabriolet pictured here, his conviction would surely have been affirmed. What if instead McBoyle had transported the Wienermobile. Is the Wienermobile a motor vehicle? It is hardly the popular, popular picture of one. I suspect his conviction would have been affirmed anyway, despite the odd shape of this motor vehicle. What about this? more powerful than a Wienermobile. No. The statute specifically excludes self-propelled vehicles designed for running on rails. A locomotive is designed for running on rails. What about this vehicle? Is it a motor vehicle within the meaning of the statute? Seems to fit the popular picture. Was it designed for running on rails, or was it altered to enable it to run on rails? Has McBoyle got fair warning if he takes this honey across state lines? And suppose McBoyle takes this vehicle across state lines, knowing it to have been stolen. Do we have to pop the hood to know whether it is still a motor vehicle? Does a motor vehicle have to have an engine? Fair enough. What about this? Is this a motor vehicle? Stipulate that the engine is still inside somewhere. Or does a motor vehicle have to be in working order to count under the statute? If it does, then McBoyle could avoid liability under the statute by disassembling a car and reassembling it once it was across the state line. That would be a silly outcome. Or is a motor vehicle any major part of a once-functioning self-propelled vehicle? In that case, here is a motor vehicle. Where is it? Surely this is a motor vehicle, despite the fact that it is funny looking. If McBoyle tows or drives it across the state line, knowing it is stolen, he has had fair warning and can be convicted. What if he chooses to fly it over instead? 
not the popular picture anymore? Are these motor vehicles? You get the idea. The McBoyle opinion is unhelpful because it suggests that fair warning has to consist in a close resemblance between the meaning of statutory terms and some certain popular picture. In specialized areas of the criminal code, no such popular picture exists at all. And in many cases, it will be clear that Congress, the lawmaker, intended to cast a wider net than the popular picture would suggest. McBoyle is often cited as an extreme example of the so-called rule of lenity. Next time, we will take a closer look.